Claws of Fury, The Legend of Hank is directed by Rob McCoff, Mark Coetzer, and Chris Bailey. God, there are a lot of directors. And stars Michael Sarah, Samuel L. Jackson, and Ricky Gervais. Hank, a lovable dog with a head full of dreams about becoming a samurai, sets off on a journey in search of his destiny. I was not looking forward to this movie. Whenever I saw the trailers for this film, which was everywhere because apparently every single movie before the movie actually started when I went to the theater showed a trailer for Paws of Fury. Whether it was G or R, they showed the trailer for some reason. The trailer was everywhere and every single time I saw it, I hated it. I got annoyed by it. You know those usual stupid and dumb reactions that are pretty much the cliche of most animated kids movies nowadays, this is the epitome of that trailer cliche. I did not want to see this movie so badly, but I had to because this. And after being the only person in the entire theater on opening day, mind you, it's fine. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Wasn't good, but it's harmless. Okay, so let's start things off by highlighting something that is neither a complaint nor is it a compliment towards the movie. This is a remake of Blazing Saddles. If I knew that going into this film, my interest would have peaked. The Mel Brooks directed Western comedy, very adult themed, mind you, about racism of all things. And this is a remake on that intended for children. Huh? And it's not just the same morals of Blazing Saddles or maybe a couple callbacks to that movie. They legitimately do the same bits from Blazing Saddles in this movie. I'm talking bits like the sheriff is near, Mongo, even the climax is pretty much exactly like Blazing Saddles. This is a total remake, unashamed by it because it even has Mel Brooks in the cast. Just the pure insane novelty of a G-rated kid friendly Blazing Saddles remake, along with the novelty of being a cinephile and knowing that the way that westerns were made was pretty much they remade samurai films, and this is pretty much the exact opposite of that, just I couldn't help but watch it and sort of be like, hmm. Not to mention the animation is very smooth and colorful and has good texture to it. The songs are actually pretty good and surprisingly cleverly written. And a good amount of jokes were legitimately funny. Not just the callbacks to Blazing Saddles, but original jokes in this film sometimes actually did work. However, if I were to ratio the jokes in this film, out of every scene, if there were four jokes in a scene, one of those jokes would be good. But even then, the three jokes in that scene that don't work aren't necessarily bad or cringeworthy or anything like that. They're just there. They don't offend. They don't get a laugh. They're just there. And while we're on the subject of the negative parts of the movie, let's talk about the cast and characters in this film. Good God. Not only are the characters in this movie just so bland and boring with no real personality to them and no real backstory, and even for the characters that we do get a backstory on, they're not really funny, they're just sort of cliched. But every single person in the cast felt like they didn't want to be there. None of them, absolutely none of them, gave any real emotion and every single time one of them said a line, felt like they were reading a script rather than say something that they actually felt with emotion. And while this is evident throughout every single member of the cast, the worst is Ricky Gervais. He, oh my God, the amount of I don't care in his voice was insane. It literally felt like they just woke him up, put him in the studio real quick and said, say your lines. And on the first take of that sleepy voice take, they said, we're good. And on top of that, even though the first two thirds of the movie are cliched, but to be fair, they do make fun of those cliches at times. The last third of this film, when it's not doing Blazing Saddles, is really cliched. 
everything that they were making fun of in the first two thirds of the film, in the last third, they were doing, and they weren't doing it for laughs. I'm talking modern music and modern technology that does not fit in a kid's film, let alone a kid's film set in the time where a gun was the newest invention. And they even did the overdone cliche of the breakup by the third act, and it looks like, oh my god, everything's lost, all hope is lost, they're never going to get back together, but you all know they're just going to get back together and this whole 10 minutes is pointless. They do that in this movie, which I wouldn't make this big a deal about if the first two thirds of the film weren't making fun of cliches like that. But if I'm being honest, that's really it when it comes to my complaints with this movie. And in all honesty, when you get down to it, this movie is just decently harmless. True, there are quite a bit of jokes that don't work. The entire cast sounds like they don't care to an almost comedic degree, and this movie plays satirical and serious with film cliches to the point where they become hypocritical. But there are quite a few good things to this movie. The animation is good, the music is clever, there are a few jokes that do work, and the fact that they legitimately remade Blazing Saddles for Kids is hilarious in its own right. For a movie that unashamedly combines Blazing Saddles and Kung Fu Panda, well, in the words of another Samuel L. Jackson role, it could have been worse, John. A lot worse. I'm going to give Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank, a C. Well guys, thank you so much for watching, and let me know in the comments down below, what's your favorite Mel Brooks movie? For me, it has to be Spaceballs. That is easily the best Star Wars parody ever made, and easily one of my favorite comedies of all time. Thank you guys so much for watching, you guys are the best, and don't forget to click subscribe and click the bell icon down below to stay up to date on all things movie all things TV, all things nerd.